Okay, in uh, this module, we are going to start looking at ionic bonding, and we're going to start with some of the, uh, the basics. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a little review that you might have seen in other courses, but then we're going to try to build on it a little bit and specifically talk uh, about ceramics. Um, so we're going to kind of start with a single bond pair that we often think about when we think about bonding. So for example, a positive ion plus a negative ion, um, those bonding together. But we also want to get to the larger uh, point of bonding in a three-dimensional structure, uh, like a crystal structure of rock salt or sodium chloride that you see here. So that's how we're going to approach um, uh, ionic bonding. So, but briefly here, um, just the, the basics of ionic bonding that you're probably familiar with. Um, we're talking about a, a type of bonding that is the result of a transfer of electrons. So sodium chloride is the typical example given for ionic bonding. Um, so we start with the atoms, the elements of sodium and chlorine. So uh, this process is again one where each of them are trying to get to a noble gas configuration and sodium does that by removing uh, this one lone electron in that shell and giving it and transferring it to the chlorine atom where it needs one electron to have a full shell and so the initial part is a transfer of electrons and then resulting in a positive ion and a negative ion, which we call a cation and anion, which are then uh, negative or uh, dissimilar charge, which are then going to have uh, an attraction to one another. And that attraction, uh, that positive uh, force or energy, um, is governed by what we call Coulomb's law. So if you think Coulomb, that's the unit of charge. So looking at the, the charge of these species. So the attractive force is governed by that. And we can look at that attractive force, uh, the potential energy, um, as, uh, so that's what the E pot here is. It's energy and the potential. And so this is the Coulombic potential energy, and it's governed by this equation. So we have Z1, Z2. These are the charges of the ions. So if we go back, we have Na plus one, Na, or sorry, Cl minus one. And so the charges are the unit charges, right? Uh, and so that's one and minus one. Then we multiply that by the charge of an electron, which is E, right? So this is a constant uh, that we can find. And then the denominator is 4 pi um, epsilon uh, naught, uh, where this epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, which is also a, a constant. And then the last part is r. So it's the distance, the separation distance between the ions. So if we think about all these, the, the 4 pi uh, epsilon naught and the charge of electron, all of those are constants. So really what governs the potential energy is the charges, so greater the charges, the greater the potential energy, so the greater the attractive force between those two bodies. And the radius is inversely proportional. So the closer or smaller uh, this separation distance is, the stronger that force is, the further apart uh, it goes down uh, drastically, right? So that, that's why if we think about these two bodies as very far apart, um, the attractive force is very low. And then the closer they get, the higher this is. Right? So the charge and the radius are the two important features in this equation. Um, on the other side, the repulsive force, um, we can think of this um, as a result of overlapping um, electron orbitals. Electrons are both negatively charged, right? so there's a repulsion there. But if we then want to think of it from a quantum mechanics point of view, there can only be two electrons in a given orbital. And so as these two atoms or ions move closer and closer together, there will be overlapping. And so those electrons will be forced to move to a higher energy state. 
And so that is a repulsive force or energy that happens. And so we can govern that by what we call the Born equation. So that's my little Born, uh, born identity joke here. Um, so this is uh, R for repulsive. And again, it's energy, so it's E. And here uh, we have a constant B um, over the radius to what's called the Born exponent. And this is between 6 and 12. So you see this is much greater than what we had here on the bottom for R. So this is much more drastic as it gets closer because those uh, repulsive forces, the overlap, is very uh, strong as they get closer and closer together. So the bonding energy is going to be the sum of those two equations, right? We have the attractive and the repulsive term. This is what we saw in the review of bond force and bond energy, right? The sum of these two forces. So that's what you get for this. Um, also, we can um, evaluate that constant B from the Born equation uh, by looking at the minimum of that curve. So looking at the minimum of the, the bond, uh, bond energy. So let me go back and sort of look at that. So here's the bond energy curve, right? So we evaluate the minimum, um, and that can give us... Oops, sorry. Uh, that can give us uh, the, the uh, bonding energy for that expression. So here is uh, basically, again, charges the uh, charge of an electron, the net charges, sorry, charge of an electron, uh, constants, and then here the R that you see up in this equation has become the equilibrium bond distance. So that's the big change between these two equations. And then we have 1 minus 1 over n, where n is that Born exponent from up here. So that's the big change where we're evaluating um, the equilibrium energy, and therefore we get the equilibrium bond distance. And again, let me just sort of illustrate that on this curve. So this is the equilibrium energy, and then this distance from here on the separation distance, that is the equilibrium R, so R naught, and then this is E naught. So that's what we're evaluating to get this equation here. And so this is the bond energy for these two ions, and we're looking discreetly at one positive, one negative, uh, or uh, in this case.